Hi, I'm Femi O.K. and you're in the stream. In Egypt, 12 student supporters of deposed President Mohamed Morsi were handed a 17-year prison sentence. With most of its leadership in prison is the Muslim Brotherhood being pushed underground again. Nika Balao. She's still off on vacation, but Maitha Al Hassan is a journalist and poet. She is sitting in as our guest digital producer, May. Egypt. We have spoken about Egypt so many times, not just on Al Jazeera English, but also on the stream. I'm really curious about what our audience are talking about regarding the Muslim Brotherhood situation today in Egypt. And they're definitely not tired about it. Good. We have not exhausted this issue because we've received a bevy of tweets and sure. the conversation is pretty heated. We actually prompted our community with this question, is the government crackdown on the Muslim Brotherhood worse than now than in mm -hmm. the Mubarak era? We got these tweets. Paul says they all wanted Mubarak out and they got more than they bargained for. And then Fatima says, the Egyptian military and the regional powers are trying to suppress the Muslim Brotherhood. There's hardly any hope for negotiations. Of course, this is a live conversation and you can be a part of it by tweeting us using the hashtag AJStream. Now joining our live conversation in the studio, Wael Eskander. Uh, Wael is an independent journalist and blogger. It's great to have you back here in the stream. Now normally you're in Cairo, in Egypt, yes. talking to us. So when you're out of the country, how do you stay in tune with what's happening on the ground? Well. Uh, most of my friends are still on the ground. Um, I talk to them very constantly and sure. I follow them on Twitter. So um, I, I get up to speed with everything that's going on th right. through people on the ground. All right, we will find out how well engaged you are in just a moment. You'll hear more from Wahel in just a moment. For the latest on developing stories around the world, we hear how Wahel keeps up to date, but you can also check out Al Jazeera's live blogs at live.aljazeera.com. If you scroll down to the bottom here, you'll find the Egypt live blog there as well. Click on that and then you can stay in touch with what our journalists are seeing on the ground in Egypt as well. I'm Amir Suleiman, poet and recording artist, and I am in the stream. What will it take to bring an end to Egypt's political crisis? 12 student supporters of deposed President Mohamed Morsi have been handed a 17-year prison sentence for taking part in violent student-led protests, according to state media. It's the latest in a long standoff between the Muslim Brotherhood and the military-backed government. During this time, thousands of Brotherhood supporters have been arrested. Morsi himself and 14 other defendants, including former presidential aides and senior Muslim Brotherhood members, are currently on trial for alleged involvement in the killing of opposition protesters outside the presidential palace. Morsi has warned that stability would not return to Egypt until the coup that toppled him is reversed. Now the Brotherhood says it's ready to talk. An alliance of Islamist groups backed by the Brotherhood is calling on all political parties to take part in a national dialogue to end Egypt's political standoff. Is this latest move an attempt by the Brotherhood to stay a player in Egyptian politics and not be pushed underground again? So to help us talk about this, we're joined by Labri Siddiqui. He's a writer and political scientist. He's also a professor of international relations at Qatar University. Abdullah El Haddad is spokesman for the Muslim Brotherhood Office in the United Kingdom. And Fatima Bayad is an anti coup activist and she also happens to be a neurosurgeon. So it's great to have you all here in the mix on the stream. Fatima, I know that you still protest. When was the last time that you've been out protesting in Egypt? Last Friday. Okay. Last Friday. Can you set the scene? Take us on a protest with us. Describe what happens. Um, the, uh, earlier I used to go daily with the protests but because of my engagement with my work I just uh, keep it to the Fridays on the big events yeah. but um, when we go we go um, we protest like a peaceful um, uh, protest we go from a mosque and we um, we try to wander and uh, according to the area we go through we go through big um, uh, big uh, streets so can people can uh, enchant us, and uh, we we start chanting anti coup protest, um, 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 and some uh, altars chanting, and uh, we have a good number. Okay, so you're protesting against the coup as you describe it. 
against a coup mm -hmm. and against um, uh, hij I would call it hijacking our uh, well, uh, our uh, electing um, votes uh, against our choices. Um, uh, that's what we are okay. uh, protesting against. So when you heard about the 12 students and their 17 year prison sentence, did that change your plan to go protesting? Okay, let me, um, I will say this. It's not, it's, it's a shocking, shocking to have such uh, an aggressive and violent sentence, but it's one in thousands. We have thousands behind bars. Yeah, it's only shocking because they are young, but we have thousands behind bars with no real um, accusations. And uh, it's not stopping us, no. Sure. Uh, those judges are just uh, the meaning of the Mubarak regime that we revolted against in the 25th revolution, the 25th of January revolution. They are still there. The, the whole uh, Mubarak regime is coming back on our feet. Um, the military is supporting them. Um, that's where, again, that's what you're protesting against. We didn't have this 25th revolution, uh, uh, the 25th of January revolution, just to have all this back. So, Wahel, you, you heard what Fatima was saying about the fact that she's still going out protesting, even though potentially it could be a very dangerous thing for her to do. When you look at the idea of the revolution being a sort of democratic revolution, is there something that's going a little awry here, perhaps? What's your take? Mm, I, I think that every, everyone who's uh, in opposition is at risk, and not just the Muslim Brotherhood. And so uh, there's a message to dissent. Uh, that anyone who disagrees with the current form of rule will actually be handed a heavy sentence. Now, now these sentences, for example... So anyone who is against the current transitional government, they could potentially be put in prison? Uh, yes. Th th in Egypt at the moment, there is no opposition. There's just the line of you're either a supporter or a traitor. And uh, the Muslim but Brotherhood is seen uh, like uh, crossing the line not as opposition by the people, but also so is the revolutionary movement, which is against uh, both. So mm -hmm. this, this whole idea of cu cutting down on dissent, like uh, cracking down on dissent, is present, is prevalent in the current government just um, to, to instill some kind of stability. Sure. May? That's an actually a very I interesting agree point, Wael. I agree with Wael, absolutely. <laughs> That's an interesting point, Wael. I'm sorry to cut you off, um, Fatima. Okay. Um, we have a lot of tweets that speak to this issue of this is not so simple. It's not just um, a, a brotherhood versus the military scenario. There is much more opposition. Fatima Saeed it's says, um, I have a tweet here. Okay, sorry, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not you, Fatima. Fatima Saeed. We'll get to you. Uh, um, okay. She says, we need to stop reducing situation in Egypt to Muslim Brotherhood and Army. It's much bigger than this. Solution lies in pro-democracy movement. And we actually had a Twitter follower comment in with a graph he created. If you, you can all see this on my screen, it shows what he believes, his name is Yahya, what he believes is the basic split of the supporters in terms of political factions within Egypt. And he's, if you see this big green mass, he's saying this is pro-government and this yellow part is the Muslim Brotherhood. And then here is the other general opposition. So, you know, my question to you, Wael, and then I'll, I want to hear from Larby on this issue, what is the actual breakdown? Well, well, certainly there is a huge support for the military and there is a, a, a following, a very loyal following to the Muslim Brotherhood, but you'd find that a lot of Egyptians do lie in, in the space in between. Just uh, the past two days, in memory of, of, of events where protesters were killed, uh, there were people who died and they were not pro-Brotherhood or not pro-Army and they were killed uh, by the police as well. So this movement is still there uh, and I think that it's uh, moving away from the binary is very, very important. And I think that this is what's what we're going to see in Egypt over the next few weeks or months. So, um, Abdullah, it's interesting if we talk, we're talking about the Muslim Brotherhood, I want to bring you in because you are spokesman for the Muslim Brotherhood in the UK and I see you smiling wryly. So if we, if we go back over the last couple of months and we do a breakdown of what's been happening, is there any other way of describing this for the Muslim Brotherhood other than a crackdown? Well, f first, I just want to say that uh, there's a lot of revolutionary movements, uh, part of the anti-coup alliance. And the two people that were died today, uh, yesterday, uh, one of them actually was the son of a leader in the anti-coup alliance. 
so we are speaking now that uh, there is a, a road uh, to achieve uh, removal of this military coup and restore our democracy back in Egypt. It's not about a Muslim Brotherhood, it's not about a certain political party, it's about the will of the Egyptian people. And about the crackdown, uh, Muslim Brotherhood will always be present on this uh, with the Egyptian society. Uh, it, it happened uh, before and uh, it's, it's been 80 years since we were in Egypt and engaging with the Egyptian people uh, and we, we'll still be present uh, there. But uh, the issue now here is bigger than the Muslim Brotherhood, it's bigger than anyone. It's the issue of the 25th of January revolution principles, it's, it's the issue of the principles of freedom and justice, it's the issue of how do you restore democracy back in Egypt. And the only way by doing so is to keep protesting on the street and uh, to remove this military coup. Lobby? Lovely. Let me just bring you into the conversation. Like you've been, you've been listening to the Egyptians speaking, so let me just stand back a little bit so we've got a more of a neutral voice. Uh, well, really, um, yeah, I agree with everything that's been said. However, I think really the, uh, the discourse generally, um, the voices from, uh, I guess, really the, the, the opposition from the government, from the SCAF, uh, is really drenched like in this divisiveness. And I guess really uh, Wael is correct when he said like we've got you know to shift you know emphasis you know away from the binary. I think that is really the direction because really uh, really what's what's at stake right now is basically you know the reclamation you know of the moral flame of of uh, I guess really a moral protest to protest really for something that is indivisible like freedom like dignity um, and really for that you don't really need sides you don't really need actually. Um, uh, political um, parties, what you need, you need basically uh, a stand, you need a stance, um, you need the principles, you need the standards, uh, and you need to measure up, you know, to those standards. Because I think it's really dangerous, you know, for um, the polity, for polity and society to degenerate into this chaotic scenes that we see, you know, on a daily basis. And really it becomes also like a performative act, like the world basically spectates, the Egyptians suffer and we keep on talking about, I guess, really regurgitating the same language, you know, the language of the brotherhood versus the army, the army versus the people, etc., etc. Right, Lovie, And so I'd rather also really... Um, Lovie, so if, we, if I'm yes. just, just going to reel off a couple of things for you, for you and then you can tell us from your sort of analyst point of view whether the Muslim Brotherhood is going to be pushed underground because of this. So they're banned in September. Thousands have been arrested. Uh, s prominent leaders are... Uh, are being charged and um, some have been sentenced, student protesters have been sentenced. Would you say just standing back looking at this that this looks like a political movement is being pushed or crushed underground? I think really uh, there is something in adversity, in moments of adversity the Brotherhood actually performs really well. Uh, you know, there is a history, they've, uh, they, these are tests, you know, they've, they've uh, lived up to um, and measured up to many, many times in the past. Um, they learned something to avoid confrontation and I guess really the, the call for dialogue is just like really, um, is that, is basically reclaiming like the voice of reason saying, look, let's go back, you know, to a dialogical ethos versus uh, as opposite a conflictive, uh, I guess really mode of, of uh, operation um, in Egypt. However, I think really what's happening now, I think the army for the first time has basically learned how the Brotherhood uh, functions and operates. They're really targeting now third and fourth generation Brotherhood because really the Brotherhood, you can actually wipe out the, the leadership and still can really operate because really it is um, historically and traditionally um, it's I just it's really like based, yeah, absolutely, know, Abdullah, I hear you. Uh, Labi, finish, finish your sentence, and then we'll bring Abdullah back in. Go ahead, Labi. Yeah, youth is really important. Sure. And I think really the Brotherhood, like the, the army right now, is really trying actually you know, to sniff out the the uh, youth leadership you know out you know and try you know I guess really that's really one way you know of uh, I guess really. Um, well, getting rid really sure. of, of the main I, leaders. I hear you know, the point the, you're the making. Youth, the youthful leadership. Let me bring yeah. in Abdullah. Youthful leadership, yeah. Abdullah, go ahead. Yes, the, 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 I just want to lay the idea that uh, the people who are in the street, uh, not just Muslim Brotherhood, part of the anti Alliance, other revolutionary movement as well highlighted, they are not against uh, the army uh, or the police or the people. 
the Egyptian people. They are against the military corrupted junta and the old Mubarak regime. And this is the whole idea of 25th of January revolution. Uh, so it's, it's not a fight between the two powers. Or, no, no, it's not like that. It's, it's the will of the Egyptian people. It is a, a fight for principles, as, as Dr. said. Okay, May. I'm sorry, why is, why is this all about the Muslim Brotherhood? Why are not you talking about the revolution? Where is the right of the dead people, those who got dead and killed and bulldozed and burned and didn't even have a decent burial? Thousands haven't been found, their bodies even, they are messed. And why are you not talking about this one? Why is it always about the Muslim Brotherhood? The reason um, Fatima th we're looking at that today and the Muslim Brotherhood today is because on Saturday they actually came out with an idea to join together all of the Islamist parties and actually talk. Let's have a national negotiation, let's have a national conversation and also just in the last week or so 12 students who were protesting have been put in prison, Muslim Brotherhood leaders are in prison as well. This seems to be pretty significant. Does it not feel significant to you Fatima? Well, for me, as a, someone who has been witnessing the massacre and someone who's protesting in the streets to protect my votes and my election and my election rights, um, their, uh, their call is not quite clear. I uh, haven't heard uh, anything about where is, who is paying for this, but for this blood. No compromise is accepted. I won't accept any compromise. For all these I just want that to highlight it. I just want to say about the idea about the national dialogue because it seems there is mis big misunderstanding sure. uh, from Al Jazeera or other uh, channels and Antico Alliance actually issued another statement about that, that there is no national dialogue with this military backed government this government came on the back of the tanks by the military governor uh, the man behind the scenes Abdul Fattah al-Sisi the man who ordered the killing and the, murder, the torturing and the arresting for all the Egyptian people there is no dialogue with these people. The dialogue is with other revolutionary movement, other social movement, that they believe that the 25th of January revolution uh, are being erased and we need to restore it back. Yeah. This is the dialogue with those people. We have uh, political differences and, and we can sustain this by that. I think it's a little more than political differences, really. The, the problem is the Muslim Brotherhood have been the single most damaging uh, thing to the revolution because they were the first ones in bed with the army they were the first ones who supported the police well, and the army and this is more see uh, this is what happened the army is they, killing the, the, everyone now in the well, streets they're fighting for <laughs> they're fighting for power the they're fighting for power at the moment you see the anti coup alliance what it wants see, is the restoration the of the Mohammed Morsi what does the anti-coup alliance uh, want? The, the restoration of Mohamed Morsi, who has failed as a what president. What Mohamed Morsi presents, well, what Mohamed Morsi presents. He, he presents, presents someone who has not done a single democratic no, no, thing. No, 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 no. no And I'm he sorry, was elected sorry, under, under the military junta. Morsi, Morsi the with someone who we elected and someone who has been through the boxes. And if you don't want Morsi as someone who you are elected, you go, you go after four years and you just discard him and get someone else. Yes. I want respect of my vote. Yeah, uh, this is a great thing to call for, but I think that being just against the coup is not enough to do that. You need to be for something. And just saying that it's a, coup, a coup happened is not enough. Because you know what happened? On 11th February, uh, un unconstitutionally, SCAF took over. But you move forward, and you have to think about it without thinking about Mohamed Morsi in place. We now, know. now on Mohamed Mahmoud just yesterday, anti coup alliance like was not there. So they would go over again and set him back and get someone else they like. Uh, but the, the reason is partly because of the Muslim Brotherhood's deals with people with arms, like thanking the military and not reforming the police. We all agree that police is brutal in Egypt, what's but what, what has Mohammed what Morsi done other than, than thank them? Well, just because you dis disagree with Morsi policies does make him someone who makes deals with the army. He is a president that were voted by the Egyptian people. It's this, not because I disagree. No, it's not because I disagree. It's because he thanked the that. police and did not reform them. It's because he not thanked the army them. and did not try yeah, them. If, if it's thanks, because he broke every he promise he made police, to the revolutionary the movement. Why would the police? So what hell, Abdullah? Just, have have to not against this just take a breath for a moment. Guest, take a breath for a moment. There's another guest that's dying to get in. That guest is called Community. May? We actually posed this question about whether or not 
a dialogue should happen and there are people that really feel passionate that the dialogue should happen between the brotherhood and other political parties first military will only tolerate status quo but the interesting thing that was the follow-up to this was what would happen if there was no dialogue and so Habab says it might escalate into a civil war at least a major divide provoking unrest that will affect the country greatly and then Saf says what would happen is what is happening and will continue to happen mass civil unrest and increasing arrests and deaths so what do you believe larby let's bring larby into this conversation larby what do you believe will happen <laughs> if the, in fact there is no national dialogue and is is it going to continue as we are seeing it or will there be a civil war i think uh, these are really hypothetical questions and in a way really that defy precise uh, answers but I guess really uh, what one can say is, is that you cannot have politics without disagreement. That's one. And this really is something that has not really sunk in um, across the board in within various Arab polities. Disagreement is really good. Uh, polities and politics thrive when you've got disagreement. But I guess really you've got you know to have like parameters and contours of how you know to frame a dialogical uh, you know brand of, of politics where people actually can converse, can play ball, uh, people can actually disagree, and yet you know have a framework within which they can um, regulate disagreement. You know through rule of law, uh, through uh, all kinds you know of. Uh, processes which are legitimate and which are legal etc etc to really talk at this stage as if dialogue is really something that ought to be um, completely written off um, until uh, CC basically blinks or the Brotherhood blinks I think is really wrong because really that really is is, is in my way in, in my view that is really actually uh, dangerous you know to, to think in in such a way I think really you've got to say yes we want dialogue but really on what terms like the terms of dialogue have to be you know have to evolve you know through uh, some kind you know of debate I guess really uh, the wise people the center in Egypt there is a center in Egypt Sure. Uh, the Lovely, people really just, who are saying, look, we are not like... So, Labi, I'm just coming towards the end of the, the show. I just want to hear again from Abdullah, uh, only because they're at the center of our conversation today, the Muslim Brotherhood is. Abdullah, just very briefly, just so I <coughs> make sure that I leave our audience with a sense of what was the strategy for the idea of getting a dialogue going within the Islamist political parties in Egypt? What was the point of that? Well, as I said again, this is not about the Islamist parties, uh, secular parties, uh, liberal parties. This is a, 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 a revolution, uh, anti-coup, against the oppression, against the old Mubarak regime. Sure. Okay. And That's there are groups now. There are groups now that they, 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 they as well said before, that they are on the street and will continue the, the revolution. Right. But they don't don't want to protest with anyone from the anti-coup alliance. Okay. That's why we said. Uh, as I think the dialogue. Can I really? Uh, can can I intervene? Lavi, you can, but you're going to intervene. Your intervention will happen in the post show at stream. .com. I know that Fatima has more to say. I know that Abdullah has more to say, and uh, Wahel definitely has more to say as well. So Abdullah, just finish us. Give us a, a closing thought. Then we're we're almost at the very end of this main show. Mm -hmm. So the idea is well, to get conversation going between all parties that have nothing to do with the transitional military government right now, right? Yes, and they are all anti-coup and they want to restore the principles of freedom and justice, the principles of 25th of January, and, and we are all in the same route together to achieve our aim and restore our democracy back. When we say sure. restore our democracy, we say restore our uh, three democratic institution, the constitution that were voted by the people, okay. the Shura Council, and the first democratically elected president in Egypt. All right. We never, ever have enough time to talk about Egypt. Today is no exception. We are taking the conversation to the post show at stream.aljazeera.com. Now on the next AJ stream, comedy, art, and music in Saudi Arabia. We look beyond the usual headlines to speak with four Saudi artists pushing social and cultural boundaries in a country that's more often known for its strict rules and conservative ways of life. Stay with us. The post show is next at stream.aldazero.com. As always, I'll see you online. Thanks for watching.
Hello again, it's good to see you. This is the Streams Online Post Show. We've been talking about recent calls for national dialogue in Egypt, this time by a Muslim Brotherhood-backed alliance. Our guest is El Eskander. He's an independent journalist and blogger. Labi Siddiqui, political scientist and professor of international relations at Qatar University. Abdullah El Haddad is a spokesman for the Muslim Brotherhood office in the UK. And Fatima Bayad is an anti-coup activist who also happens to be a neurosurgeon. So Fatima, I want to come back to you because you just remind us why people are out there demonstrating and protesting. What will you be doing this coming weekend? We keep protesting and we, until we uh, get our ultimate goal back. We get our, um, the, our democratic uh, process back, our respect of our votes back. And uh, anyone who doesn't like a president, we can go to the next elections and step him back. And um, 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 the main goal that no one speaks about is uh, those criminals should pay for the blood they spilled. I've been an eyewitness to the, to the Rabah massacre. I've been volunteer in the hospital there. I've seen thousands, hundreds and thousands of bodies that has been uh, exploded and uh, just playing outside their skulls with some kind of... Uh, uh, with some kind of injuries that I, I've never seen in my life. It's, someone has to pay for this. But it's that I instead of just, I have to stay like, as a neurosurgeon, I stand like from six hours to 12 hours on my feet to save just one life. Imagine to see this, standing there, couldn't help anyone. I couldn't just work as a neurosurgeon. No, I was just turned into an undertaker just to save them from being humiliated, just to give them a, a decent burial. Hundreds of, of bodies have been burned, have been pulled out. Hundreds of bodies that couldn't be found. Who will pay for this? No one is speaking about this. Those murderers have to pay for this. So, Labi, this is why Fatima is frustrated by talking about national dialogue when she's protesting on the ground and the things that she's seeing and witnessing. You wanted to jump in just right at the very end of our main show, so I did ask you to just take a pause, but we're going to pick up right where we left off. What did you want to say? I think really, uh, basically uh, Egypt really has to move forward and has basically, I guess really the center, the, the, the wise women and men of Egypt who are really capable, it's a brilliant you know, uh, nation, um, should really get together and I guess really form that center. It's, it's like the center really that does not take sides, the center that I guess really the, the kind of issues that Fatima is talking about, you know, if they are to be uh, addressed they ought to be addressed like you know within a, um, a framework framework of transitional justice maybe really a framework also of um, a special tribunal for Egypt that uh, is held you know in um, a neutral country because really at the moment really uh, you cannot have uh, the scrutiny of the law I, I can't really imagine the judiciary being able or capable of delivering um, impartial justice in, in Egypt no. And I guess really, no. you know, to move forward, you know, on that kind of a track, you know, will, I guess, really free Egypt, you know, to be able, you know, to heal and um, I guess really to build again that momentum, you know, for democratic reconstruction and democratic learning. Sure. Fatima? Yeah. I heard you making sounds. Yeah, I was just, um, just agreeing that we have a corrupted judges that cannot be trusted for this uh, transition of uh, justice you're talking about. No, sure. we cannot trust them. No. Well, okay. I, I want to put my vote with Fatma and I say again that there is no national dialogue with the killers and there is no national dialogue with the corrupted people. All it's right. the issue of revolution and anti-revolution. It's a dialogue with the people who are in the revolution himself, with the All people right. that believe that yeah, you but want Abdel, to Abdel, I would, I would agree listen. with that. No Abdel, dialogue with the, with the murderer, no, co no compensation yeah, with whatever Abdel, it is. Not ever. Right. Yeah. Wants to talk to Abdel. Abdel. Okay, that. let's talk to Abdallah yes, one at a time. Ever, Fatima, you ever sleep, with continue. murderers. All right, okay, Fatima, just, just hold tight for a moment. Uh, Labi, you have Abdullah's ear right now. Mandela did that. Uh, do you think Mandela really did not really feel dehumanized and basically completely uh, silenced, uh, completely oppressed the whole nation and the lucky like, system, you know, like apartheid? And this guy really transcended like, you know, the, the threshold, you know, of hatred and basically uh, faced up you know to uh, his nemesis professor, professor, he actually there is no stretched like really 
Professor, in I Egypt, know, there is I know no that is like, you know, very, uh, sounds very no utopian, sounds very world. utopian. No, Professor, no, no, no. Excuse no. me? I, I, I want to say that there is no such thing as a civil war or, or a civil, it's, 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 there is a corrupted, a killer, an anti-revolution, an old Mubarak regime, that needs to be removed. It's, it's very simple. There is no civil war. We are all Egyptians. And as I said before, I'm not talking are, about civil war. You're the one talking about civil war. Okay, yeah, gentlemen, no, yeah, just yeah. take a break for a moment. I want to bring the community in because sometimes we forget the, the other guest on the show, uh, May. Well, I'm going to take you with a trip, uh, with me on a trip. Um, Smart Aarons agrees. A community member says Egypt is greater than Morsi, Muslim Brotherhood, and other, pers and other people, I believe this tweeter is saying. For Egypt to get out of this cycle, Egyptians need to realize that as a people. But what's interesting, Larby, you brought up this um, issue of how do we move forward and maybe we need the international community to come in and intervene. We got a video comment from Aisha who has some similar recommendations, so I wanted to play that for you all. Egyptian standoff with the military won't end until constitutional legitimacy is again established in Egypt. The Brotherhood came into power with free, fair and free elections, and their supporters are the same that stood for days in Tahrir Square, they aren't going to back down now. The military has been trying to get rid of the MB for days without success. The catalyst would be foreign governments forcing free elections again in Egypt um, with international watchdogs and making sure this time that the will of the Egyptian people um, stays in power and they get to decide what they really want. Do you think that's feasible, Wa'al? Um, I, I don't think it's about international uh, intervention at the moment. I think it's about the Muslim Brotherhood that lost a lot of trust because it made promises it did not deliver even before Morsi was elected. They need to build on being genuine. Right now, no one trusts them at all. And uh, they were actually so mistrusted that they weren't allowed inside the Mohammed Mahmoud protest, a very important well, protest. As an Egyptian, we can do this. We don't need anyone from the international the community to, do that, to help us with anything. Just stop yeah. the coup. Don't deal with them. Don't accept them. Don't uh, don't deal with them as a legitimate. They ha take them out of the legitimacy, the and then yeah, you can do it. Better, yeah. <laughs> th th that's exactly that's exactly yeah, why the, the calls past. for dialogue between the Muslim Brotherhood uh, and other forces won't work because they don't have the trust. They don't have the power to lead in that aspect. And I think that uh, what they need to do is just, uh, they've had the chance that they've, bl they've blown, and legitimacy is lost when you break promises. You don't say this, there is a democratic process, there were a democratic process. I just want to highlight the idea that a way it represents the idea of anti-everything. If you are going to be anti-everything, you are going to achieve nothing well. But that's not we, true. We need to realize, no, that's true. We need to realize that the revolution will, will succeed. Uh, when 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 it, when it include all the Egyptian people together, we yes, stood I, me and you, you I, together I, in Tahrir Square, and we have succeeded in our revolution, and we are we ousted Mubarak in no, no. February. I agree, you have to be there for something, and that's why you go out uh, for the re reformation of uh, the Ministry of Algeria. You use uh, you use projects like there was a project called Manifesto that calls for building on projects like bread, freedom, social justice, and human dignity, and we have to gather around these projects and build them and be for something, not someone. For something and not against something. Of I agree with that. For something. As I said before, it's not about Morsi, it's about the principles. We you are, two we are, are never street. going to agree, so I, we, we, we hear the back and forth. So let me just skip one back and forth so we can bring in May. Uh, we have a community member who says that chants yesterday at the protests that you were mentioning were against Morsi and CC equally, and please, away from useless polarization. And I'm, I'm feeling like a, this is the same sentiment that you're trying to get across. Exactly. So, Larby, mm -hmm. I would love you to weigh in on this. Where's, where's the path forward? I, th I think I heard you mention that enough with the p living in the past. Indeed, yeah. I guess really, uh, these are really the youth. These uh, are the students, the people who are, um, I guess, really uh, protesting about something that is moral, you know, so, so important. And therefore, really, uh, to be forward-looking is very, very important. Of course, like, you know, the past is important because memory and memorialization, you know, of injustice and going back, you know, to, you know, that process, you know, of basically delivering justice is really, is as important. 
but it's got to be like really framed. You cannot just like really be stuck in the past, like I don't talk to the Brotherhood, or basically the army is not part of a process of dialogue. I guess you've got to say which part of the army you know ought to be excluded, which part of the army you know ought to appear b before uh, courts, and which part of the army basically you know can be integrated you know into a uh, national dialogue. But really, and at this stage, really, no one actually has got the upper hand. I've done a repeat. Absolutely, because I didn't hear absolutely. What you said. So, can you say that again? We didn't all hear what you said. Yes, I, I, I agree. I agree with Professor Labi about the idea ah. that our fight is not with the army. Agreement. Our fight with. Interesting. <laughs> our fight is not with the army. Our fight with the corrupted military junta. If there is a part from from the the, the, the leaders of the army, or a part from the security for forces, or a part from the any political party that are corrupted, all Mubarak regime, they should be excluded because we have to, to. There is a political process, and this political process should be with people with honesty and dignity. All right. So, um, Abdullah. Let me comment. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I need yeah. to comment here. Go ahead, uh, so, uh, those young people are not just about the past. They are fighting for the future to have a future free of military judging. That they can have elect whatever they want without the military come in, uh, and uh, because they don't like him, they will send him back. All right. So let me this just is ask. Acceptable. They are fighting for this, and the girls that are. Uh, uh, younger than 18 years old and they've been detained uh, with a school gown because of their protest against the coup they are they fight for their for their future all right we hear, we hear you Fatima very strongly where you're coming from so November the 16th anti-coup pro legitimacy national alliance strategic vision it's quite a document Abdullah has anybody actually come to you and said yeah we're behind this with you you said it's not just about the Muslim Brotherhood, it's about a bigger picture. What's the reaction been? Well, uh, uh, it's not about the reaction uh, itself. Uh, we are not expecting the reaction will come instantly after the the, the, okay, the statement was out. Okay, so are you saying out. no reaction so far? But I'm saying that uh, as we have seen bef uh, yesterday, there were people on the street uh, protesting uh, against this um, military junta, protesting for the revolution. So we believe that there is a chance that uh, uh, this revolution will be come back to the spirit of the 25th of January revolution. All right, I hear we what you're saying. Together. So this is a statement from you, but I'm really intrigued. Has anybody responded to you yet? Uh, as far as I know, no. Okay. All right. That's good. It's a good place to end. Nobody speaking. But there are, there are oh. people within the government <laughs> like uh, Lobby. They are going to pull the plug in Doha. So I'm just going to say. We love having you in the discussion before they turn the lights out in Doha and also before they turn us off on the internet as well. So you have been listening to Labi Siddiqui, Abdullah El Haddad, Fatima Bayad and Wahel Eskander. This conversation could go on and on. I would like to take you all home with me so we could continue it. But we have a show. We can do it on the stream. May it's been great to hear what the community has to say. Literally, we have to go. So the conversation will continue at hashtag AJStream. Just time to tell you about tomorrow's program. Comedy, art, music in Saudi Arabia, yes. We look beyond the usual headlines to speak with four Saudi artists pushing social and cultural boundaries in a country more often known for its strict rules and conservative way of life. It should be an entertaining show. So, I will see you online. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.